Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the VBF Facebook Live with Dr. Roy Geronimus. Sorry, we're having some technical difficulties. Please let us see your um, questions so we know that you're there and that you can hear us. Say good morning, Dr. Geronimus. Good morning. <laughs> so we just want to make sure that this is working. Uh, if somebody could send a question through so we can see that we are live. I'm not seeing any questions. Let me try on my iPad. All kinds of ways of trying to get on here. If you can just hold this and let's see if normally. Oops. So this is the way we normally go on here. Welcome to Facebook Live. Oh, there we are. We are on. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Jody. Thank you for letting us know. Uh, she has a question for you about port wine stain on the lip. Will laser be effective or is the lip debulking the only way to go? So we do use lasers for port wine stains on the lip, but really only for the color. It could be helpful for some of the mild thickness, but if there is true thickening of the lower lip or even the upper lip, then a surgical approach is the better way to go. Uh, but many times we do use the laser treatment to help blend in the color, uh, since we do see significant lightening in most cases of the birthmark. We don't want patients walking around with very, very dark lips if in fact they can be lightened. But for debulking, uh, you're better off with a surgical treatment. Thank you, Jody, for asking that question so that we know we're live. I'm on our Facebook page trying to see if it will pop up, and I'm not seeing it pop up. So I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's not even popping up live on our Facebook feed. Can you see it, Jody, on our Facebook page? Oh, here we are. Welcome, Julie. Thank you, Jody. Oh, okay. And people are watching. I'm trying to see why it's not showing up on our, because you could see it would be bigger. Please send your questions. We're waiting for your questions to come in. Oh, here we go. So, it's, there'll be a little delay, but I'll be able to see the questions at least. Hi, Linda, I can see it. So she's saying, okay, thank you. So if so, here's my question. My son Levi had six or seven labors in Atlanta. Um, I can read it to you better. Um, make sure you can be seen. We stopped because of insurance and it seems it wasn't getting any lighter. So she's, she's from the Atlanta area. Uh, it seems like it wasn't getting any lighter. My concern is about his face becoming over time thicker would it be beneficial as far as the preventing the deforming to keep up with it even though it's not thick now would that prevent it we have found that treatment of the birthmarks does prevent thickening that can occur uh, the thickening that occurs is often not present until many years later in life uh, but you do get gradual darkening over one's lifetime so yes there is benefit uh, if your child has not been treated for several years there have been changes in the technique, which can lead to a more effective response. So I think it's worth going back to your physician and revisiting uh, to at least maintain the treatments and perhaps get much more clearing than you, you would have achieved earlier uh, based upon updated technology or techniques. Somebody wants to know the difference between a seven or 10 millimeter spot size. Is one better than the other? Uh, well, there are several reasons to consider uh, the different spot sizes. Uh, I prefer the larger spot sizes for a number of reasons. <clears throat> and there's, some of them are technical, some of them are practical. On the practical side, you get through a treatment much more quickly. 
So if you're doing a treatment either in the office or in the hospital, uh, it's always best to do the treatment more quickly uh, whenever possible. Uh, so with a 10 millimeter spot size, uh, you are getting through a surface area much more rapidly than you would with seven. But I think even more importantly, uh, I have found that the larger spot sizes allow for a little bit deeper penetration, more scatter of the beam uh, to a larger and deeper area. Uh, so our outcomes, I believe, are superior. So in general, I, for a port wine stain, I do not use a seven millimeter spot. I'll use, by and large, a 10 millimeter spot for most uh, lesions, but in some cases where I'm treating a large area on the body, I'll even use a 12 millimeter spot. Uh, the newer technology, which hopefully will be out um, you know, sometime in early 2018, uh, may even have a 15 millimeter spot, which uh, should make these treatments even easier. Jill Hart wants to know if there's any updates on the new laser and when it will get FDA approval as you continue to use it on adults. Are you finding the distal areas, lower legs or feet, or anything that getting better results? So this is a, a very good question. Actually, Linda and I were just talking about this before going on live this morning. Uh, the company, uh, Cineron Candela, uh, which makes the device, uh, has just changed hands. Uh, so they have new ownership. They've been purchased by a company called Apex, a private equity firm, I th believe, based in, in England. Uh, so they're now assessing whether or not to proceed uh, with the newer technology, which includes radio frequency. Uh, I'm hopeful that they will. Uh, we believe that it's been very helpful for resistant port wine stains, and we have seen improvement on the distal extremities to a greater degree than we saw without the radio frequency. So. Uh, I guess it's my job to try to encourage the company to proceed with the, the newer technology, although they will be uh, introducing, at the very least, uh, to my knowledge, uh, the upgraded version uh, without the radio frequency, which allows for a faster and speedier treatment, uh, but I'm hopeful that they will include the radio frequency in the new model, uh, which will hopefully be out in the first quarter or half of 2018. So Aaron wants to know, he said, good morning, his son is eight months, he's had 10 laser treatments for port wine in the V3 distribution and neck. He's had some improvement, but it seems to be slowing down. Should we continue or take a break? I think many times uh, it, it's worth assessing how the treatment is being delivered. Uh, there are differences in the approach. So all lasers are not the same all laser treatments are not the same. So I think it's worth taking a, a step back just to make sure that the, the technique itself is optimal uh, and perhaps there's a reason why you're not getting more clearing. Sometimes we also, uh, I see this with my own patients and patients coming in from other physicians where there might be reasons why you don't see the improvement. Uh, for example, uh, we see rashes or dermatitis uh, fairly frequently in port wine stains without treatment and more frequently in port wine stains that are being treated. So it's important to assess whether or not there is a dermatologic condition that might be obscuring the outcome that one is seeing from the laser treatment. So that's an important question to ask as well. Um, Samantha wants to know, her daughter is six and she's been on propranolol for two years with no change. Should she, when should she start considering surgery? So we're talking about a hemangioma? Six, yeah, hemangioma, and she's hemangioma. six. Uh, you know, I really would have to see uh, the hemangioma. Uh, I think typically propranolol works better in the proliferative phase when the hemangiomas are rapidly growing. There can be some benefit when they're not rapidly growing, but I would think if you're at a standstill at this age uh, that it, a surgical option uh, would certainly be considered. Um, Julie wants to know what is considered early intervention? When is it no longer early? I think that's a good question. Uh, that is a good question. Uh, you know, we're talking about port wine stains, I assume. Uh, I'd like to begin literally right out of the nursery if possible. Uh, that's when we see our uh, most effective and most rapid response. But, uh, you know, I think any time is not too late but ideally you want to get to these children as early as possible. Um, Laura Dietz Shaw saying good morning. Uh, we need to see some more questions coming through. And Lisa, I know you're listening. Some people are texting that they're having a problem finding the video. 
Um, I'm not sure. I just tell them to go on the Vascular Birthmarks Foundation Facebook page and scroll down. Uh, it's um, from shoulder to shoulder. Thank you for replying. That was Samantha. Uh, can you please comment on effectiveness of sirolimus? Uh I have not seen any uh, dramatic response to sirolimus. Uh, as a result, of, in terms of clearing of the port wine stains, there have been some publications that have shown that. Um, we did try it for quite some time. Uh, I have not seen any dramatic change. I think there's very little to lose in trying it, uh, but I wouldn't expect a dramatic difference compared to laser treatment alone. Um, and so Ashley is saying she's noticed that the last two treatments her daughter has great purpura around the edges, but not in the center. Um, it's a port wine stain. It's only on the right cheek and half of her brow bone. Is that spot being treated? I guess she's looking for where there's no purpura. Does purpura mean treatment? Uh, purpura does indicate treatment, but there are instances where you don't get purpura. Uh, and we sometimes see that in very young infants where they, the body's just not capable of creating the purpura, purpuric response. Uh, Many times uh, physicians may be using uh, what we call longer pulse widths or lower energies, and in those cases you won't get purpura as well. But in the ideal world, you do want to see purpura, but there are some instances where it just may not happen, particularly in the young children. Um, someone wanted to know if tufted angiomas can come back. Uh, that's a, a, not a very common condition. Uh, in my experience, I've only seen a few, but I've seen some return over time requiring retreatment. So if it's present, then they should see one of our specialists, right? I think that it. would make yeah. sense. Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, Julie wants to know if you treat the eyebrow area? Uh, I generally do not treat the eyebrow area in the young children uh, or infants. Uh, the reason is you can get very prolonged hair loss, so I try to avoid that for as long as possible. Uh, once the the patients are, are significantly older and the eyebrow hair is thicker, then we have a much better, greater chance of treating without the side effect of losing the hair. But during early infancy and childhood, uh, I do avoid treating the eyebrow. Marwa has a vascular malformation of the face. She's had surgery by using a tissue expander, uh, removed 50% of her birthmark, but in the last surgery, the vice cut the skin and caused sero. Uh, seroma, so the doctor removed it. I can't take the discussion to complete or no after. I'm afraid it may occur again. Seroma, I don't. Well, I'm not an expert in seromas, but they do occur sometimes after surgery, uh, and in uh, certain circumstances, they. Uh, uh, this is something that's not necessarily a complication, but a side effect of the procedure. Uh, typically, they can resolve on their own. Sometimes they'll need to be re-excised. So Mimi wants to know if there's any progress on an angiogenesis inhibitors that are promising. Uh, I know there are several angiogenesis inhibitors that are out there. Uh, the rapamycin that's been uh, touted a bit, uh, I believe, is not necessarily overly effective when used topically. Uh, but by and large, uh, there's investigation into newer versions of that drug, and hopefully we'll see more clearing or improvement as a result of those advances. Florana Jimenez says hi to you from Costa Rica. Okay, buenos dias. <laughs> uh, should we do a double pass 0.45 mils and 1.5 ms for maintenance treatment at age 2.5? Uh, I think with the very short pulse widths of 0 0.45 milliseconds, um, I, I would avoid the double pass. Uh, and the whether you do that at 1.5 milliseconds really depends upon the depends on the energy that's being used. I, I so I, I generally pass. avoid the double uh, passing, just for safety reasons. So I can see the questions. Um, okay, so. My son has propranolol and it's greatly diminished his hemangioma. He is now off. It's still there and he's almost three. Would you leave it? At what point would you do surgery or would you try laser? Well, it's, it's hard to answer that question without actually seeing it. If there's a superficial component on the skin, if there's redness left, then laser should be helpful. If there's a fullness or a real thickness below the skin that's very, very bulky, 
uh, then surgery may be an option. But uh, one of the things we have found with propranolol is it doesn't necessarily impact the superficial component, the red component on top of the skin. Uh, so the laser treatment in conjunction with propranolol or after propranolol could be extremely effective. I would encourage those of you who have children on propranolol uh, to consider seeking a physician who does lasers as well to work with uh, your pediatrician or physician administering the propranolol because we do believe it can shorten the length of time the patients are on propranolol by getting to that superficial component and also minimizing the chance of rebounding. Um, so Laura said her 11 week old is seeing Dr. Anderson. He's treated his port wine stain twice. He mentioned the importance of treating as many times as possible by age six months because of transmission from he fetal hemoglobin to adult hemoglobin. Can you explain, will continued treatment past six months be effective? So uh, first of all, uh, you're very lucky to be in the hands of Dr. Anderson who really developed all this technology, so we owe a lot to him. He's really uh, changed the, the world of vascular malformation single-handedly. So we uh, are very grateful uh, to Rox Anderson for what he's done. And uh, I'm glad he's treating these patients very, very early, and I think he's 100% correct uh, that it should be done early and as much as possible before six months of age. But nevertheless, you know, if you, don't, if you have not achieved complete clearing by six months, uh, then I feel that uh, you should continue the treatment. Uh, six months is not a hard stop. Uh, we we uh, do see a, a greater degree of change because of that fetal hemoglobin, the fairness of the skin, the small size of the malformation uh, during that first six months of life, but there's still a lot to be gained in treating after six months. Jennifer wants to know what frequency of treatments do you recommend for babies zero to 12 months? We have done a study on this which we published in the journal of the American Academy of Dermatology uh, a while back uh, where we looked at uh, differences at between two, three, and four week intervals. And we found that if we treated at two and three week intervals, we actually had a faster degree of clearing and more complete clearing. Uh, this is something you can do with the young babies, and there are multiple reasons to do that, not only the fast response, but one of the things we try to do with the early intervention is minimize the need for general anesthesia. And, you know, we'd like to be done or as close to done as possible by the age of one. So if we uh, can treat frequently uh, with fairly uh, strong parameters, then in many cases we can get dramatic clearing. But the one exception to this would be is if your child uh, is, uh, has very dark skin. So for example, with black skin and some other patients with very, very dark skin, whether it be uh, Middle Eastern, sometimes we'll slow down a little bit and maybe, maybe not offer uh, that treatment at two or three week intervals. Um, so the clearing that's been done already before a child is one years old, when does the darkening start to happen or will it maybe not happen? Well, our hope is that it does not happen. I think the more clearing we get, uh, the more improvement we'll see and the more long lasting the results will be. So the, uh, if we get 100% clearing, I think we're less likely to see uh, significance or significant recurrence or any recurrence. Uh, but that remains to be seen. Uh, so by and large, if we do see darkening, uh, it's usually around puberty. So um, Allison said her th they've been treating her superficial hemangioma on the globella with timolol with no progress, but they were told at three months she's too young for laser. Is that true? That is not true. Uh, first of all, uh, timolol is a very, very good drug. Uh, it works best with very superficial hemangiomas, particularly with those on the eyelids. Uh, but it pales in comparison to what you can do with a laser treatment or for superficial hemangioma. So if it's not responded, then I think it's worth visiting someone who has a lot of experience in using laser treatment for those types of lesions. It should work much more effectively, especially if it's just superficial. If there's no deep component, laser should work beautifully for this. Luann said, what are your thoughts on alternating between the YAG and the pulse dye for treatments if the pulse dye isn't always available? My daughter is three. I'm not a big fan of using a YAG laser in children. Um, I, I, sometimes you can see effectiveness with the Synergy device, but the YAG laser by itself, uh, I would avoid treatment in young kids. I think it's a bit riskier. Uh, one of the most important things one has to consider is safety. 
So we take that for granted, but if you're going to be treating uh, a birthmark, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the treatments that are being offered are safe. There are always risks. Fortunately, the risks are very small uh, thanks to the, the technology that we have that Dr. Rox Anderson developed. Uh, but if you begin to go beyond the zone of safety, then you run the risk of scarring, and we don't want that. Um, so Kim said her daughter is 15 with a port wine on her cheek. She has not had treatments in 10 years. Dr. Bernstein felt the vessels were too deep and the laser could not reach it. He did tell us about uh, a new laser being used on adults only. Do you think the new laser will penetrate trait deeper? I can't convince her to resume treatment. Uh, yes, uh, the laser that Dr. Bernstein was referring to is new. Uh, and, and so far uh, investigational, not generally available. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in this program, uh, we're still waiting for the company to accept that they are going to, or agree that they're going to release the, the new technology to the general public. And I hope that they do, because I do think it works more effectively, particularly for those resistant port wine stains. Julie wants to know if there's a, a publication or a document that they can pe people can take to their doctor to let their primary care know that a uh, laser is effective to, for treatment. Uh, yes, there are various uh, different papers. Perhaps it's something we that can be posted some. on the yeah, we have them on the website. website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Mar Mar Marie Lise wants to know, in, one, in your views, are the IPL treatment on a half-face port wine stain for a 2.5-year-old, the IPL treatment? What are your, point, what are your views of it? Uh, there are some physicians in this country and, and throughout the world who like the IPL for port wine stains, one of them being uh, Jerome Garden in Chicago. Uh, I'm not necessarily a, a big believer in it. I think we're better off with the, the pulse dye laser used with the contemporary parameters. So there's um, Lauren. Her daughter has face syndrome, and she's being seen in Chapel Hill in North Carolina. They've had success with propranolol and laser. What are your thoughts on sedation with the eyelid, face, and lips being treated with the laser? Uh, in general, I feel that, that six-month-olds don't necessarily need sedation. Uh, we generally treat the young children uh, at that age in the office without it, uh, using eye shields in the office setting, but that's really up to the physician that you're seeing, whether there's a comfort level by him or her in placing an eye shield in the office setting. Um, Samantha's from West Virginia. She says hello, and her five-year-old son Jackson has a port wine stain on the right side of his face and arm. We're getting treatment. Um, our dermatologist who treats us at Northwide Children's in Columbus, Ohio, says he has reached the point where he only needs maintenance. How often do you recommend treatments in maintenance? He's in kindergarten, so it makes treatment more complicated. Uh, I'm sure it does. Uh, before considering maintenance, I think it's worth assessing uh, the actual treatment itself uh, to make sure that the treatment has been optimized. Uh, and then, uh, assuming that it has, uh, then treatment maybe once a year or so would be enough just to maintain the benefit of what's been achieved to date. Um, Ashley wants to know, she said her doctor says not to use the 10 millimeter size. She wants to know if her daughter will get good clearance because he's using the 7 millimeter size, or will this cause less clearance? I, gen I always use a 10 millimeter as a minimum size and sometimes use a 12. Uh, I do believe that the 10 millimeter size not only works more effectively, uh, but is also faster, leads to a, an easier treatment for the child, uh, and uh, I, I believe it's also safer. Um, so uh, Jody said she missed the comment on the new laser coming out that has the 15 millimeter spot size. When is it scheduled to be available? Uh, the company's hoping to release the, the new device uh, in early 2018. I, but I've been hearing that for a long time, so uh, I, I would assume, you know, by the second quarter or the set by the, the end of the first half of the year in 2018. Um, Ravi wants to know if there's anything new in the treatment of blue rubber bleb nevises. Uh, the treatment of blue bl blue rubber bled nevi, uh, I think, can be accomplished in a number of different ways. Uh, there's always surgery, uh, but that's often a problem because people with this. Uh, syndrome often have many of these lesions, 
Uh, so what we have chosen to use is a long pulse YAG laser, uh, in particular the XLV, uh, which has worked nicely for us. It doesn't always get rid of them completely, but it can make them much better, much flatter, much less noticeable. Uh, many times they're very symptomatic and it can make them feel better as well. Um, the, another mom wants to know how to get the word out to the pediatricians about early treatment because they feel like they're missing these opportunities. I think that's a We're huge problem. <laughs> uh, Linda Shannon has been, Dr. Linda has been working mm -hmm. very hard on that. Uh, we are presently working on a very, very large paper collecting uh, over 200 patients been treated under the age of one. Uh, so that's, we're working on that now and we hope to submit that to the pediatric literature so the pediatricians will be more aware of it. But I think the most effective mechanism has actually been this organization. Uh, the Vascular Birthmark Foundation has done a phenomenal job in educating uh, the public and uh, physicians. But we have that even within the field of dermatology. There are people who don't understand, physicians don't understand or appreciate what we can do. Uh, early on and the benefit of treating early. But uh, I'll actually defer to uh, Dr. Linda on that issue. Yeah, so uh, the VBF is doing everything we can and we are working with physicians like Dr. Geronimus to publish and then we share those. We are starting our online course, A Foundation in Vascular Anomalies. In two weeks it's going to go live. So we're going to offer that to doctors all over the world and he's done a, mo a wonderful module on treating early and so has Dr. Nelson. So um, we're staying on top of it. Uh, the next question is, um, what is ge the general laser setting used for a one-year-old? And is there any difference between an infant and a one-year-old? Uh, there are differences. We generally are a little bit more conservative with the infants for sure. And it's hard to generalize regarding treatment parameters because it varies depending upon location, color of the skin. I'm going to treat somebody with fair skin differently than somebody with dark skin, uh, as well as location of the birthmark as well. Uh, but in general, I'll, on the face, I'll use a 10 millimeter spot with a 1.5 millisecond pulse width, and I'll push the energies between uh, 8 to 9 joules per centimeter squared uh, with the young kids, unless the skin is very, very dark. Once we get off the face, uh, then I'll switch over to a 12 millimeter spot, which I think can work quite effectively as well. As the kids get older, you know, beyond the age of one and a half, one to one and a half, uh, then I begin to shorten the pulse width to 0 0.45, uh, which I think can work more effectively, but I'm a little reluctant to use that with young infants. Um, Lauren said her daughter is three and was advised to wait for treatment of her port wine stain on her arms. She wants to know, what, if, would she see any clearance now, and do you suggest general anesthesia, or at what age, and would you even suggest she try lasering it? I, I think it's worth a try, and I, you, know, this, you have to keep in mind that certain areas on the extremities will respond more slowly. Uh, below the elbow, below the knees, these are areas that are, are much more slow to respond to laser treatment. Uh, whether one uses an, general anesthesia or does it in the office setting, uh, really depends upon uh, the ability of the child to undergo the procedure and the, uh, the, I guess, the ability of the physician and the staff to handle young children. Um, I know that some offices are better prepared to deal with young children and they, you can get by with a, uh, a larger treatment effectively. Uh, other offices are not as comfortable and under those circumstances, uh, general anesthesia might be a better option. Holly said her daughter has 10 little port wine stain or birthmarks and she's 20 months old. Where should she start and at, at what age and what area should she start? And does she need a referral? Uh, you know, I think, I feel very strongly that the sooner you begin, the faster the response will be and the more complete the response will be. So, you know, I certainly would have to see what areas are involved, but uh, perhaps they could all be done at once. So um, Kayla just said thank you for getting information out that her, her son started closer to one and she wished she had started earlier, as a lot of these moms are saying. Will laser fully help in case of a hemangioma that's really deep? Uh, generally, lasers do not work well for deeper hemangiomas. Uh, and in that case, you know, you have propanolol early on during the growth phase. Uh, there are other instances where uh, surgery is required 
uh, and even other instances where injections or embolization is necessary. So, um, Irina said that she has a scar from a PDL. Is there any option to reverse it? Yes. Uh, it depends on what type of scar uh, it is, whether it's a raised scar or a depressed scar. Uh, ironically, the same laser can be used for elevated scars. If it's a depressed scar, then there are what we call laser resurfacing procedures that can be used quite effectively. So um, Lauren said that her daughter has a port wine and she's six and it's in the lip and the eye in the eye area and should she start treatment? Well, I think so. I mean, I, I do think that, you know, many of these birthmarks can be very concerning for these children, not only from a uh, psychological point of view, but also from a medical point of view where you do get thickening over time. So first you get darkening and then you get some lumpiness and bumpiness uh, and this can be minimized through uh, laser treatment. So I do recommend that your daughter be, at least be assessed for treatment. So um, Liz says that she sees Dr. Garden in Chicago and she was com curious about your thoughts on treating with the IPL on a stubborn port wine. She said her daughter is very, very fair skinned. Do you think the IPL would be more effective than the PDL for, the, for this? Uh, I don't have IPL experience with port wine stains. I know Dr. Garden is one of the few uh, who does and I would certainly trust his judgment if you're under his care. Uh, he's one of the world's experts in this area. Uh, I prefer uh, the pulse dye laser, and particularly if you have a resistant area to shorten the pulse widths, and I think that sometimes can make a difference, but uh, you're in good hands where you are for sure. Lauren says that um, she has in-laws in New York City and she's from out of state. Do you treat patients from out of state because she'd like to see you and get an opinion about what's left of her daughter's hemangioma and if it can get treated? Oh, well, I, we do see patients from around the world, so. Yep. I'd be happy to provide an opinion or treat. Um, Irina wants to know what the latest outcome for the trial to treat with r radiotherapy is. Is it going to be applicable for children? And is there any follow-up on your study that's going on? Yes. Uh, you know, we have seen more and more improvement of resistant port wine stains and uh, dramatic improvement of patients with thicker port wine stains with the combined approach where we use radio frequency in combination with the pulse dye laser. As I was mentioning earlier, the company that manufactures the device and is sponsoring the study uh, it has changed hands. Uh, so uh, there is now a new uh, company that's involved uh, called Apex that has acquired Cineron Candela. Uh, and they're, they're new and they're just now assessing uh, where and how they're going to uh, address the, the new technology. So that it's, it's too soon to really know what they're going to do, but I would hope uh, that this will be used ultimately for uh, many of the patients that we see presently and are treated with the port wine stain, uh, which treated with the pulse dye laser alone. So Robbie wants to know um, about serolimus for internal vascular lesions. Uh, they can be helpful for various different conditions, uh, you know, one being tuberous sclerosis, uh, and it's used for other uh, types of mixed vascular malformations, but uh, it's a very, vascular malformations can be a very broad term when you're dealing with something internal, so we would have to have more specific information. Um, but it is used commonly uh, for patients with internal vascular malformations. Menka wants to know if you know any P doctors using the PDL in India, and we don't have anyone on our list. So. Uh, I don't know personally. You don't know no. anyone, okay. So um, Jennifer wants to know, when do you suggest the use of general anesthesia? Have there been any studies on the psychological effects of holding children down for the treatments? I mean, those are all, those are very good questions. Um, psychological studies on holding children down, I, I, that hasn't been done. I've seen many patients many years later after we've completed treatments and they seem well adjusted and they're not coming back to complain to us. Uh, one of the reasons I like to get to these kids very early is that there will be no real memory of the treatment itself. Um, so when should one deliver a, a general anesthesia? Uh, that's a very personal decision that one has to make with the physician. A lot depends on the comfort level of what they can accomplish in the office. Um, some physicians are not comfortable placing an eye shield in a patient who's awake uh, for an area around the eye. Um, other physicians are. Uh, 
They may not, some physicians have a very good team that's capable of immobilizing the child for some of these very short treatments. Uh, and other physician, other situations where the children just can't stay still if it's a larger area. Our particular preference is to delay general anesthesia for as long as possible. Well, we published an article last year in one of the dermatology journals showing that there were no changes in behavioral issues and there are no changes in cognitive issues uh, compared to a control population. Uh, there still is some debate in the medical world whether repetitive exposure to general anesthesia is a good idea. Granted, many of these treatments are extremely short. The anesthetics are much safer than they used to be, but my belief is general anesthesia should be delayed for as long as possible, but sometimes it is necessary. Um, so um, Lu Luann said that her daughter has some scarring that occurred from the YAG laser. She wants to know if she should be concerned about it and said they have since switched to the pulse dye. Yes. Um, I mean, any kind of scarring is, is concerning. Uh, you don't want to have a scar, uh, particularly if it's on the face. But there are things that can be done for the scars as well. There are a number of these procedures called resurfacing procedures that can improve scars uh, quite a bit. And this is something I'd mentioned earlier in this uh, session where, you know, I do have more concerns about the YAG laser and, and the risks involved, uh, which is one reason why I generally do not use it in, in the pediatric population, unless I'm dealing with a venous malformation or some type of unusual vascular malformation where it's necessary. Um, Ashley said she had a treatment in Birmingham, Alabama, and the doctor used the PDL with such a high setting it burned her face. She scabbed for 9 to 11 days. She insisted that this was normal. She said, I don't think so. I've had 30 treatments in my life without burning and scabbing. Is this normal? Well, anything can happen. Uh, I think the ideal outcome is not to have uh, scabbing. Uh, of a significance. You may get some mild scabbing. So I think that if that occurs, and that can happen for any number of reasons, not necessarily the physician's fault, uh, but uh, I would think going forward you'd want to minimize uh, the amount of scabbing that occurs after a treatment. We do expect bruising and maybe some very, very mild scabbing, but if it's extensive, then I think some adjustment in the treatment is necessary. Christine Roberts wants to know, her son is three years old, and how often would you do a laser treatment at three? At three, I generally treat every two to three months. Um, Dr. Uh, Scott Couples says hello, and he says, what is the laser you use on my face for an aged adult birthmark? Uh, Scott has been uh, receiving a combination of the newer device with the uh, pulse dye laser in combination with the radio frequency and uh, I think in his last treatment was the straight pulse dye laser alone. Uh, actually in conjunction with the YAG laser for his uh, thickened areas for the, the bumps on the skin. Um, Nicholas wants to know, besides Dr. Weiner and Dr. Levitin, who would you recommend to debulk a lip from a, a thick lip from a port wine stain? I would not like to make recommendations of specific physicians uh, in this we program, but uh, yeah. Dr. Linda can make a recommendation for yeah, you. Yeah, we have a list on our website. Um, okay, so Amy wants to know, she says, hi from West Virginia. She has a port wine stain down, down her backside of her right leg. She's now been diagnosed with KTS. Is it too late to start laser treatments, and would it even help her? Laser treatment does not help as much uh, in mature uh, KT. Uh, it's a little bit easier when the kids are very young. Um, but in many cases, you can still get lightening of the skin. One of the things we have found with KT, uh, and this is a syndrome that we see on the extremities, is that if there's a predominant deeper component, uh, then that should be addressed first. If it's something that can be treated through sclerotherapy, uh, then that should be done prior to laser treatment. And I've seen you know, a rare instance where sclerotherapy has actually uh, improved the skin in terms of uh, considerable lightening. Uh, but there's no question in my mind if the underlying vessels can be shrunk, then treatment of the skin will work much more effectively. Um, Ashley wants me to let you know that she thinks you're a wonderful doctor and she wished she had learned this information when her daughter was first born. She said a lot of doctors she have seen, has seen told them that no one would do any treatments until age one. You're doing an amazing job to get this information out there. Thanks, but we need your help. We need right. really to get this out to as many people as possible. And that's and maybe even address the neonatologists. 
uh, that's true too. So that may be my next area of uh, examination. <laughs> um, so Precia said her baby is nine months old and was seeing a dermatologist at six months old on Asperolone and Propranolol gel, but she's not seeing any difference. I'm not sure if it's port wine or hemiangioma. I'm assuming it's a hemiangioma, but if there's no difference, and a lot of parents ask me this, so if they're not seeing a response within a few weeks, either the dosing's wrong or they could try laser, Well, uh, again, propranolol is best for the deeper component. The laser alone or in combination with timolol for the topical use is effective for the superficial component. The combined approach uh, for deeper hemangiomas and mixed hemangiomas where there's a deeper part and a superficial part, we see the best response when propranolol is used in conjunction with laser treatment. And that's one thing that's been grossly underutilized is the potential, is the addition of laser treatment to propranolol. It really does shorten the length of time that these kids need to be on it and can minimize the chance of rebounding. Uh, Laura Taylor Box says that they've been recommended topical anesthesia with a nerve block on the face rather than general anesthesia. What are your thoughts? My son's had 12 treatments this way, or 15 treatments, and he's 12. I think that's a great option. Um, nerve blocks can work very well, particularly if it's in the center part of the face, so you can give one or two injections and numb a large area. So if you have something in this area here, we call the V2 area, you give an injection right here, uh, and that can numb this whole component. Uh, the topical anesthesia, you know, will help minimize some of the discomfort as well. So um, Jenny Carter Nolan said they're excited about coming to see you. They're just waiting to hear back from your office on, you know, getting an appointment. And her son is three months old, and he has extensive port wine. Kind of, it sounds like our family from Malta on the face and 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 parts of the body. So she wants to know, when, will you treat all of it or certain parts? And they're excited to see you well, soon. We like to do as much as we can at, at uh, each visit. Sometimes we have to break it up over one, two, or even three sessions. But uh, you know, out of convenience for everyone, uh, we'd like to accomplish as much as we can per treatment session. Um, so Menka said that she's undergone 30 uh, PDL treatments but hasn't had much effect. She was 28 when she started. What would you suggest? Should I continue or not? Um, well, I don't know how many, after how many treatments you don't see any improvement. Well, there are some patients who are simply unresponsive. Uh, there are other instances where the diagnosis may not be correct. Uh, and there are even f uh, more situations where uh, the treatment sessions themselves have not been optimized. So I think it's worth a, a second opinion uh, as to how the treatments have been delivered to see if, in fact, there's a better way to do it or a better technology. Um, so Sherry Parrish sent in a note, and uh, shout out to Sherry. She's the chairman of the board. And it's important what she's saying because her daughter is 20 and almost 20, and she held her down for two laser treatments when she was three to six months old. Her hemangioma is long gone, and she has no memory of those laser treatments. Well, that's one of our reasons for starting early. I mean, I'm not saying this is not traumatic for these babies and these children. There's no question that it is. Uh, but if you get to them early, then they, they just don't recall, and hopefully there's no impact of that. Um, so Jennifer said, do you recommend laser on a hemangioma that has no dark coloring, just sagging skin? She's eight. Uh, it depends on how loose that skin is. Uh, we use a different type of laser for that redundancy of the skin that we see that often looks like cigarette paper. Uh, we often use a laser resurfacing procedure for that. Uh, and in certain situations, if it's very loose and very saggy, then surgery would be required. But there are options uh, that do exist for that. Um, Menka wants to know, do you have any uh, um, concealers that you recommend for a port wine stain? Um, there are a number of things that uh, one can try. Um, uh, there's Dermablend, uh, which many people like. Um, uh, if you're near a microskin center, uh, which there's one in New York, and the, that group often travels to different cities to offer microskin, where it, a customized uh, foundation is made that often stays on the skin for several days at a time, uh, can be made specifically for uh, each patient. 
That's a great option as well. Linda, do you have other suggestions? Yes, on our VBF page at birthmark.org, we have two um, makeup artists. You can scroll down on our Ask the Expert and Ask the Makeup Specialist, and they'll actually send you free samples to try their products. So the next question we have is, does doing laser on the lip after lip surgery reduction help the lip from growing back? Good question. Uh, I do not think so. I do not think the lip, uh, laser treatment of the lip will have any p impact on the thickness or return to the thickness over time. Uh, it is basically for color at this point in time. Um, so Noel says hello from Australia, and he said um, they have a, his 21-year-old son has a venous malformation that's not visible, but it's in his right thigh between his muscles. Um, he's saying there's, I guess, a small focal thing. I've attempted sclerotherapies. Um, showed there was no change. Do you have any recommendations? Uh, typically, if you, if I saw a patient with this problem, I would, would refer to an interventional radiologist who has a lot of experience with this type of problem. Uh, I'm not sure why your, your child did not respond, um, and these are often very difficult or complicated situations, uh, but sclerotherapy and or embolization can be very helpful in some situations. Um, Seth said his 17-year-old daughter has a port wine stain covering 40% of her right leg. They've been told it is a vascular birthmark, a port wine, but he said she doesn't care about it, but should he make her go get treatment? Oh, I don't think you can make anybody do anything unless it's a, a young child. Um, it is helpful in minimizing the thickening that can occur. Uh, many times uh, patients with these birthmarks do get the thickening that can occur over time. If it's a young girl, or it's a girl, a female, uh, you do worry about the ability to shave one's legs over the long term uh, as, as the nodules or papules, the bumps that occur on the skin, develop over time. So there is some benefit in treatment, but it's hard to force someone. <laughs> so we're getting close on our time, so I'm gonna read these quickly, Dr. G. Is there a difference between propranolol and hemangiol? Uh, there are slight differences between the two. I think the key is that the physicians who is using either one or both understand the differences and there may be some slight adjustment in the dosing in terms of uh, how each of them are used. So Jewel Summers said she took Accutane and that um, then the skin where her port wine is very dry and the texture doesn't seem as smooth, would resurfacing it help it or cause more dryness? Uh, that should resolve over time. That may be a short-term issue with the Accutane. Accutane, I'm not sure how long it's been for you, uh, but I would not expect that to be a permanent uh, condition. Um, so um, Amy said she's 51. She has a port wine with KTS, left arm, chest, and hand, and that um, she was, uh, is there any recommendations for a physician in Louisiana taking pericardia to open vessels? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what that treatment is, but uh, uh, you may have a list. She has lymphedema as well. She right. she can go to the VBF website. We have a couple of specialists in the Alabama area, so she can find them at birthmark.org. Um, I'm going to try to get these Port Weinstein questions in. Uh, Dani, Danica says, do you recommend using topical numbing cream for infants? My three-month-old daughter has a port wine on her arm. I believe I read that it may lessen the, the effectiveness. So, and what I, is the best moisturizer after treatment? Uh, I do not believe that topical anesthetics should be used under the age of one. And also, one has to be very, very aware of how much topical anesthetic is applied to the skin surface, especially with some of these young children, because uh, you can get absorption in the body, uh, which could lead to some medical issues. So our practice here is not to use a topical anesthetic before the age of one, and then after the age of one, we're very careful, and we measure how much we're actually putting on the skin surface uh, prior to the treatment to make sure that there's no uh, systemic absorption. So we actually have a careful calculation that we follow for that purpose. So the answer at that age would be no. And what about a moisturizer after treatment? Uh, I don't think it really matters. I don't think you need to spend a lot of money on it. Um, you know, CeraVe often works quite well for uh, the patients after these treatments, if there's crusting or scabbing, then I like to use Aquaphor healing ointment. 
Um, so Luan wants to know what should we look for when looking for a sunscreen? Do you recommend wearing it every day? Torn between risks associated with both sun and sunscreen. I think the risks from sunscreen are overstated. I don't think they're really legitimate. So uh, I think it's important to make sure that if you're coming in for treatment that you're not tan. So the more tan you are, the less absorption there'll be of the laser light, and the more likely you are to have issues with short-term whitening of the skin, which can occur if someone's tan. That fades over time, that resolves, but it's best to avoid it if you can. So uh, sun's never a good thing uh, for the skin, speaking as a dermatologist, uh, but also speaking as a laser expert, you don't want the skin tan for a treatment, and I'm not concerned about uh, the use of sunscreens. So BB Eva Wing has a good question. She wants to know about treating the lips. Will they get good clearance, and what happens to the lip color when you're treating it? Well, you have to be cautious. I wouldn't get too aggressive on the lip. Uh, otherwise, you can get some lightening of the lip color. So you want to avoid that. But I think you also want to avoid the situation where the skin around the lip is significantly lighter, and then uh, you're left with a very dark red or, or purple lip. So we like to treat, I don't necessarily treat every session, but at least every few sessions to try to lighten as much as possible uh, so things blend in as well as they can. Okay, so we have five more minutes, and Erin said that her seven-year-old daughter has a large segmental hemangioma, she has face syndrome, and she says that um, the child is now four and she's noticing some rebounding. Can they expect further, uh, oh no, we noticed it's continuing to rebound She's four to six. Can we expect it to further rebound, or do we need to explore other interventions? I think it's worth an evaluation. Uh, uh, rebounding of a hemangioma is unusual uh, at that age, so I'd be, I would, would like an assessment to make sure that the actual diagnosis is correct, uh, that it's nothing more than a hemangioma. Uh, when you begin to see darkening at that age, you have to think about other things that uh, it might be. So I would go back to your doctor and just to reassess the situation. Okay, well, we are going to wrap it up, and I'd like to thank Dr. Um, Geronimus for his time. We have one more quick question from Diana. She wants to know your preferred settings for a V2 port wine stain on a Hispanic child. Uh, a lot depends on the age of the child. Uh, generally, I'll use a 10 millimeter spot size, a 1.5 millisecond pulse width, uh, energies around eight joules uh, under the age of one and as they get a little bit older I'll try to push that uh, pulse width up uh, excuse me the energy up closer to nine uh, and in some cases with the dark skin I'll use a, a shorter pulse width and lower energy if I'm going to use a 0 0.45 pulse width then I will drop the energy down uh, below eight uh, for safety reasons but a lot depends on on how dark that patient is and also how tan the patient is as well. Okay, another quick question. Um, what about these essential oils and organic products to help keep the skin moisturized with where the port wine stain is? Good, bad, or? I'm, I'm indifferent uh, to it. I don't think it makes a huge difference. Uh, we do see some dryness and eczema in the port wine stains. That's not that uncommon. Uh, so if you can minimize it by moisturizing, I'm not sure if it needs, if it needs to be an essential oil, but. In general, I don't recommend patients spend a lot of money on moisturizers. Uh, you can get a good moisturizer without uh, spending a fortune. Okay, well, we want to thank you, Dr. My pleasure. Geronimus. And okay. uh, so anyways, thank you all for our Facebook Live session with the world-renowned laser expert, Dr. Roy Geronimus. And to many of you, um, he does have patients come in from all over the world. And also, do not forget October 7th, Saturday, at the Beckman Laser Institute in California is the Vascular Birthmarks Conference. We are offering free laser treatments this year. We still have some free hotel rooms. And there are, of course, we do not close the door to anyone seeking a free clinic appointment or conference attendance. So please get your registrations in. It's coming quick. Go to www.birthmark.org. And that's Saturday, October 7th at the Beckman Laser Institute in California. And also our next Facebook Live session will be with Dr. David Darrow, world-renowned expert and dentist in treating port wine stains of the mouth, the gums, and dental issues. So stay tuned for that. We thank you very much, and happy holiday to all of our, happy new year to all of our Jewish friends, and we'll see you again. Take care.